Hello, today I'm going to review our perennial vegetables. Are they really worth it? I'm Liz Zorab and this is By The Farm. Over the last year or so I've been planting more and more perennial vegetables so I can grow more food for less work. So I'm going to review the plants I've been growing and decide whether they're worth growing again or not. One of the things that I say repeatedly is that uh, it's not worth growing something if you don't like it and you're not going to eat it. Uh, you'd be better off growing a plant that's going to flower or enhance your garden in some other way, like something being grown for the benefit of pollinating insects. So let's get started having a look at my perennial veg. Investing in perennial vegetables isn't always cheap. Uh, so these asparagus, for example, I actually ended up buying them in bulk. Um, and they worked out at about £1 to £1.50 per crown. But you can't harvest from them for the first year or two. And so um, it's a long-term investment. It's also a long-term investment in terms of uh, the amount of space they take up. Uh, these plants can be productive for 20 years or more. We really like asparagus. Uh, so. I think the investment in the time and the space and the money is definitely worth it. Uh, it's actually been relatively trouble free. All I've needed to do is keep the bed fairly weed free to reduce the amount of competition in here and to give it a good mulch each year. And that's what I'll continue to do. And it should carry on uh, increasing its yield year on year. This taunting lean cow uh, arrived as a small cutting to root and they do indeed root uh, very easily from cuttings even in cold weather uh, which is great news uh, particularly if you have a plant like this one. So this went into the ground and I had high hopes for it um, but we haven't eaten very much of it at all because as you can see rather than being lush green leaves uh, the caterpillars have decimated this plant uh, and even this week uh, I've been picking caterpillars off it and obviously I haven't kept on top of the caterpillar population here so they have been able to run riot and uh, all the rest of my brassicas are grown uh, under cover apart from my sacrifice plants. Uh, I didn't want this to be a sacrifice plant I wanted to harvest from this so I think what I'm going to do is uh, go through the centre here uh, and take lots of cuttings and root those and then grow them under cover uh, from the word go. <laughs> Allow this plant to grow on because I can keep on taking cuttings from it but my lesson learnt here is uh, none of the brassicas in our garden uh, can be uh, out in the open uh, unless I'm very happy for our very healthy cabbage white uh, butterfly and cabbage moth population uh, to feast on it. So in terms of yield this plant is now uh, one year old uh, almost one year old since I took the cutting. It's done really well uh, uh, to produce such a nice big plant. It's got masses of new growth uh, all of which can become healthy new plants so I think this was worth the investment in the time and the energy and I really like the taste of it. So this will be replacing uh, some of the other brassicas that I've been growing in terms of, I'll get it under cover, and this will become our main uh, leafy green next year. The Egyptian walking onions, uh, which I planted in this bed, have done exactly what we wanted them to do. They've grown, uh, they've produced bulbils on top of the stems which have bent over and dropped into the ground. And there are some here, uh, which have got little green shoots on them. They've got roots, so they will take roots in the ground and spread this clump out. So I think these are a success. I really like the flavour of them. Uh, I will keep these ones. And this is my walking stick cabbage, which eventually will grow much, much taller. But again, uh, this one has succumbed to uh, severe ravaging uh, by... <laughs> By the caterpillars and I really don't know how to uh, grow this so that the caterpillars can't get it I can't keep it covered if it's going to get to 10 feet tall 
Um, so, do you know what? I can even see a caterpillar in here right now. Let's remove that. So that's a little um, a cabbage moth with a little green caterpillar. And they're so well disguised, they really are uh, the same colour as the leaves and they're very, very hard to spot until they get a bit bigger. So, um, the verdict is out on this one. This one had the very strong cabbagey taste, which I thought would be nice uh, in potato, mashed potato or something like that. Um, but until this grows a little bit more and we've got more chance of uh, <laughs> harvesting some of the leaves, I can't say whether it's one that I would keep on growing so we'll come back to this uh, maybe next year when it's a bit bigger uh, hopefully um, it isn't completely eaten to a lacy <laughs> mess <laughs> and we'll actually get to try it this is the skirret um, which I haven't harvested yet it's probably not going to get harvested for another two possibly three years but I think another two to give the roots a chance to develop a, a really good root system and it's the roots that you eat. I planted this uh, as young plants. I bought one young plant and when it came it was very obviously. I have two in the pack so I divided them. Both have done really well but I also bought some seeds um, planted those and not all of them grew um, but it wasn't a bad germination rate. Uh, so they've grown to, where are we? Uh, maybe 15 inches tall this year they've now died back and i'm going to plant them in this bed so i have a bed of skirret uh, what i'm going to do is harvest some more of the swede rutabaga um, and then space the skirret out uh, in this bed so all of these i will be going in here to grow on for the next few years so as yet i, I still don't know what skirret tastes like <laughs> when i get to trying it i will let you know and here is another, uh, a new one for me. This is Yakon. Uh, so it produced these uh, lovely flowers which have now um, been caught by the frost and uh, the leaves, you can hear, are crunchy. Um, and I can see uh, around the base of the plants, there are indeed some tubers uh, ready for me to lift. So I'll lift uh, all the roots and the tubers and I'll harvest the tubers and then I will keep the central uh, corbett with the new growth points on it, growing tips, and they will get replanted. So I'm going to replant those uh, in pots and store those in the polytunnel for the winter. I really like this. I'm hoping that we really like the taste of it. There are in fact so many tubers uh, around the base of these plants, I can literally just see them lying on the surface. Uh, so here's one I've just pulled off. I'm going to take this into the kitchen um, and with the other one that I got from the other day uh, I'll cook them uh, and we'll do a taste test. And so regardless of whether uh, we grow yakon again to eat I will be growing it in the uh, flower border because I absolutely love the plant. So that's it. There you go. Good boys and girls. There. Would you like to go in now? Go in for a little while and you can come back out later on. Yes, you can. There you go. There you go. Good boys and girls. In this bed in the centre of the patron's garden, I put uh, some sweet Sicily, uh, there's some Angelica, and there's an awful lot of ochre. So the sweet Sicily is at the front. That's fine, that's doing really well. And I use that uh, to put in with rhubarb because uh, just a leaf or two of sweet Sicily will help take the bitterness out of rhubarb, that, that sharp acidity away. Um, and for me, it's worth growing just for that. Angelica uh, is a beautifully um, architectural um, and statuesque plant when it gets going um, so it will uh, I would imagine next year come up I have a feeling it could be a biennial form so it will come up and will produce flowers but the stems uh, can be crystallized um, and used in things like decorating cakes 
and then her this bed is covered in ochre so I've grown ochre for the last couple of years um, to build up my stocks what well, I now have plenty of them and when I harvested them last year we were really excited to have so much but I've got to say I enjoyed the taste of them less um, this season uh, than I did previous years they taste lovely grated in salads but you can boil them uh, and use them like a potato that way or you can roast them if you're interested in growing them uh, I'll leave some links to them uh, in the information below and this is uh, the nine star broccoli um, and as with uh, all the brassicas um, it has again been uh, <laughs> nibbled by an awful lot of caterpillars uh, and slugs and snails um, and this ball plant uh, has also had to contend with being the number one favourite plant for our turkeys to come over and eat. So whenever I let them out uh, to free range there, make a beeline for this plant um, and nibble it. But uh, it is starting to look pretty good in the middle. Um, and I'm hoping that before too long, uh, we will then get some broccoli flowers, florets, uh, you take out the top one and then some more grow and take those out and some more grow around it uh, very much like um, purple sprouting broccoli would do uh, but this is uh, a short-lived perennial so I'm quite excited to see how this one goes the the leaves themselves I I don't like the taste of them all that much it was, oh, it's interesting it's cabbagey but I'm, I am really looking forward to the taste of the florets one of the things I really do like about the plant uh, are these really thick white ribs in the middle of the leaves. I actually think it's really attractive. Um, and this again, I think would be worth growing um, in maybe a mixed herbaceous border, uh, just because it gives a really nice texture and structure and shape, um, whilst also um, then providing us with some food. And then in this bed, uh, growing up the trellis, is this rather unassuming uh, little green plant, which doesn't look like very much at the moment. So there's some uh, growing there, and some here, and one on that side. And this piece, which is really do with a bit more support than it's getting. There you go plant. So this uh, I'm really pleased with. Um, this is the Caucasian spinach, so Hablitia tamanoides. I think that's how you say it. And it's a perennial climbing spinach and it grows to about three meters tall eventually. And it will supply us with spinachy type leaves uh, during the hungry gap, so uh, after the new year, when everything else is looking <laughs> a little bit previous uh, or just gone over, uh, there should be some fresh uh, green leaves for us then. I like the taste of it. I don't very much like it raw, but uh, I've tried steaming it and I do really like it. It is spinachy. I like it. I've done it cooked in some eggs. Um, just to put a bit of uh, put a bit of greenery into our, our scrambled eggs, I've really enjoyed that, and I'm going to look forward to trying that um, some more in that in between stage of uh, very late winter and early spring. So, are they worth growing? Well, as an experiment, yes, simply because I'm now finding out which varieties I like and which I don't. Will they completely replace my annual vegetable garden? No, I don't think so. I think what they will do though is supplement it really nicely.